Namaste everyone and welcome to our Peace Day in Gandhi Jayanti Assembly. The International Peace Day was an idea proposed by the United Nations General Assembly in 1981. Four decades later, that message of peace, unity and kindness still holds true. In fact, you could argue that peace is especially important today. As we are in the midst of a pandemic, both internal and external peace are of paramount importance. The best way to overcome this obstacle is by staying peaceful and supporting others within our own communities. As Maha Gosananda, a renowned Buddhist monk said, when you make peace with yourself, you make peace with the world. I would love to invite Annie Ma'am to do just that, to start today's ceremony by helping us make peace with ourselves and feeling centered. Annie Ma'am will invite the bell of mindfulness. First, we will hear a short sound of the bell, inviting us to stop doing whatever we are doing sit still with our eyes closed and get ready for a few moments of mindfulness. After this, we will hear three long sounds of the bell. Allow its reverberations to remind us to return to our breathing in the present moment. So when we hear the long sounds of the bell, we stop talking and we stop thinking. Make a conscious effort to take a long in-breath and out-breath with each sound of the bell. Annie ma'am, over to you. Thank you so much, Anima, for that extremely soothing guide. In the spirit of togetherness, we reached out to all our students to submit artwork and poetry about peace and Gandhiism in particular. This is a collection of those submissions. Under these beautiful strokes and powerful words lie messages that are vital to peace. Today, I would like to show you the drawing of Gandhiji I made for the assembly. As you can see here, I have drawn the iconic charkha used by Gandhiji to spin khadi. It is iconic because before, Indians were forced to buy clothes from the Britishers. So, using a single charkha, Gandhiji started the movement in which Indians could spin their own cloth and thus making us slightly more independent. Thank you. Bye! In India's darkest hour, when brother killed brother on the street, the Mahatma's belief in Ahimsa faced the biggest challenge it could meet. I will not accept failure, said he. If needed, I'd rather choose death. Violence I will conquer with love or keep trying till my last breath. Hundreds were butchered in Noakhali and thousands of victims had fled. Hatred and fear filled the hearts and minds as the once peaceful land bled. The Mahatma walked undaunted, though paths had been flooded to stop him. He walked alone through scorched villages, hearing tales agonizing and grim. Don't leave, be brave, he told all. Remember, you are brothers in arms. Our religions teach us to love each other, not to wish each other harm. His message brought people together, bringing peace to the troubled land. The Mahatma's moral courage, even the coldest heart, could not withstand. Gandhiji had shown the world Ahimsa's immense strength and power. History still remembers Noakhali as the Mahatma's finest hour. Namaste everyone. My name is Naina Saran and today I'll be sharing my drawing with you on the topic peace. So um, before I show the drawing to you, let me tell you that uh, uh, whenever we get the topic peace to draw, so what the first thing we get in mind is the peace logo or the dove but today i have made something uh, quite unique and uh, very meaningful so here it is so this drawing actually means that uh, the army only maintains the peace in the world because they have to fight and um, everything i hope you liked my drawing and thank you very much There once was a child, lonely at times, commotion all around her. There was no unity nearby. A sudden knock on her door. She opened it with a blissful smile. 
and peace was outside. Rights for all. There was harmony the whole night. And that day she realized that the world is not only full of sadness, struggle and sleepless nights. Instead, happiness, hope and heartwarming times. At the end, the refugee survived and peace was restored worldwide. Namaskar. This is Arjun of Chaudhary. Time magazine wrote in the year 2000 that there were two immortal human beings who lived in the 20th century, Albert Einstein and Mahatma Gandhi. We call Gandhiji Mahatma, which means the great soul. He is also the father of our nation because he got us freedom from the British rule. Gandhiji devoted his entire life to the pursuit of truth and practice of non-violence, not only in action, but in thought. He had a great influence on leaders all over the world, particularly Martin Luther King in USA and Nelson Mandela in South Africa. I am proud to be an Indian, a country where Gandhiji walked and breathed. May we all imbibe his two sterling values, spirit of service and simplicity. Thank you. Well, it's so great to see what our student body is capable of. That was an excellent and creative take on Mahatma Gandhi's Ahimsa, India's beloved form of non-violence and peace. On that exciting note, we have an interview with Shelly Jyoti Ma'am to talk about Gandhiism and talk about that same collectiveness and togetherness. She's a visual and textile artist, fashion designer, poet, and an independent curator. Her work centers around the historical and cultural context of Indian history and contemporary times with a focus on Gandhi's philosophy of nation building for creating moral and peaceful societies. She continues to explore Gandhi's experiments of Swadharma, Sarvodhya, Swadeshi, and Swara. She is a recipient of several prestigious awards from organizations such as the Indra Gandhi National Center of Arts, the Indian Council of Cultural Relations, and the Gujarat Lalit Kala Academy. Namaste, ma'am. It's a pleasure to have you with us. Um, I'd love to ask you some questions, following which I'll accept questions from our live audience. Um, so the first question for you, ma'am, is which of Mahatma Gandhi's philosophies do you feel are relevant today? So let me first of all uh, uh, say thank you for having me here. And it's such a pleasure and a treat to come in this space of student activity. Um, there's a special bond with your school. Um, one, because for all my uh, uh, shows in, uh, which have happened in Delhi in last about, a, about eight, eight years, um, your director, ma'am, uh, Manika ma'am, has been very kind and, uh, and uh, been uh, sending uh, the high school kids to go and view the works. And as I just mentioned, speaking to uh, students, they, they bring a lot of palpable discussion. And um, so it's been an exciting journey with the Seram. Also my grandson studies in the school. So there's another uh, special connection with the school. So coming back to your question on uh, which of Gandhi's philosophies are relevant today. So I would um, like to walk you all through those four philosophies, which have been integral in all my uh, 10 years of work. If I can share my uh, presentation. Um, yes, of course. One second. So um, uh, let me just uh, give you a little background of my art practice for, for all the students to understand how I reached up to Gandhi and how his uh, philosophies became relevant to me from the present day perspective. Since I was looking for, uh, there were issues which came in my, uh, incidents which came in my life where I felt the need of citizen awakening and uh, the philosophy of building moral and peaceful societies. I could, I, I, I was, I've been reading Gandhi for a long time and I found my answers through his, his philosophies. So uh, through my artworks, I, I uh, narrate Gandhi's experiments, experiments uh, which he succeeded in uh, with his first Champaran movement in 1917-18. Then his next experiment about Salt the Great March, his experiment of collectiveness. Till then, Gandhi, before, prior to his Salt the Great March, Gandhi was uh, uh, fighting the British 
as a singular individual by writing like, uh, letters to British. By the time he reached at the Salt the Great March in 1934, he realized the power of collective impact. And Salt the Great March uh, uh, was an idea of um, uh, Swadharma and Sarvode to me. And that whole show uh, shared, uh, I shared visually his idea of Swadharma and Sarvode. I, I'll explain the idea of Swadharma and Sarvode as I move on to my next slides. And uh, then Swadeshi movement of Gandhi and the Swaraj, uh, his book in Swaraj, which uh, talks about uh, his idea about nation building. And the book which he wrote 100 years back in 1909 is so relevant from today's perspective, uh, not only relevant from uh, today's perspective of India, it's globally, the, the, you, get, you get an answer uh, how to deal with the community. And uh, so eventually you see um, my art practice has two components. One is Gandhi's thought leadership in relevance to the 21st century. And the second component is the contemporary artistic production. And that artistic production comes out of a textile tradition called Ajra. So um, I'm really glad sharing uh, uh, about the Ajrak textile traditions because your ma'am, Upasna ma'am, recently shared uh, an amazing uh, project that you did on handloom. And I felt very proud of the school that the, the, the students um, uh, could understand the 70% of a rural population who are spinner, weaver, and handicraft makers. An idea where the students uh, emerge and delve into the idea of how our handicraft and the, the sector has been working and uh, how much respect uh, they need from the 30 crore urban population, the 70. So my works examine Gandhi's message to humanity, engagement with the craft communities and struggle of India's independence and exploration of heritage textile and reasons to empower individuals. So in uh, 2009, uh, my first show was in, in relation to Gandhi was Indigo Narratives. And Indigo Narratives, I was exploring the role of Indigo in India's freedom struggle and Gandhi's first Champaran movement, uh, first Satyagraha in India after he came back from South Africa. Of course, uh, my inspiration was a literary text called Neil Darpan. I, I don't want to go in details about it, but Gandhi was fighting the indigo farmers, the indigo farmers who were forced to grow indigo because of the Eurocentric needs. And for almost 300 years, they were dying. Um, they were dying uh, um, of, um, uh, of poverty, of, uh, of uh, subjugation. Um, Till Gandhi came in and, and he fought that fight was singular, it was a Gandhi singular fight. Um, in the same show, I explored the, uh, indigo as a plant color and a dye. Now here I would like to mention why Ajrak. Ajrak comes in my life in 2008. Uh, the translation of Ajrak in Arabic language is blue and blue is indigo. And that was the time where most of these synthetic colors hadn't come up. And uh, Ajra dates back to 4,500 year old textile tradition. So I went to Bhuj because I was on an indigo project and I learned the, the textile tradition uh, from the craftsmen. And then my journey with uh, Ajra has been uh, in, in perhaps all my shows. Um, the next show was Salt the Great March in where in I, in, uh, I, um, I explored Gandhi's philosophy of Swadharma. And what is Swadharma? Etymologically, Swadharma is a Sanskrit word, Swa and Dharma. I'm sure most of your students are, 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 are students of Sanskrit as well. So what I mean by Swadharma within the context of my work is adherence to one's duty towards the society unto oneself. It means a performative nature of duty which is done voluntarily, wholeheartedly, with a sense of purpose that would eventually make an individual happy and, and contented. This is Swadharma. Swadharma, I'm talking about my duty towards my country. My shows, all my works are building moral and peaceful societies for my country. And uh, the relevance of Sarvode, Sarv Uday, 
again, this is a Sandhi Vichet, Sarv Uday means upliftment for all or progress for all to help others grow. So if as and when I'm, I'm talking about Swadharma, Sarvode, you will realize the importance of all these in the present day and day and age. Though I did this work almost 10 years, eight years back, uh, Swadharma for my country, countrymen is important. We need to do something for our people. And when the pandemic struck in, um, and Sarvode is helping the community, bringing the community alive, doing something for, we all had started to live lives in cellos. And this is where Gandhi in his book, Hinswaraj says that if we follow the European model or the Western model, uh, we, we will all work like slaves. There is no inward thinking and pandemic came and taught us we need to introspect, pause, halt. So, so all these philosophies, when I started to look back at my work, I felt relevant from today's perspective. And this was a 2013 show where I created a lot of solidarity series in Salt the Great March, which I'll visually show them once I move on to my next slides. And then my next show was Khadi March, just five meters. I found a quote of Gandhi where he said, instead of giving three pesa to the spinner and weavers, give them three anas. And for the younger children these days, perhaps they may not know what three ana is. Three ana is a bigger denominator uh, to three pesa. So, uh, and that would mean Swaraj to them. This is what Gandhi wrote. And this is this, when he uh, wrote, he, he wrote it for the urban society in, uh, in 1934 or 37, this quote uh, is said to have been mentioned. And uh, uh, so um, uh, I found that very meaningful. I said, uh, I mean, what are we urbanites doing for, for the 70 crore urban population, for those spinner and weavers who are the livelihood is the same. And we, the 30 crore living in the urban societies ha are on the world map, but those people are still there where they were. So then the idea of five meters struck me and I said, five meter is, is what a human body needs to cover themselves. So it went a half meter for a shirt, two and a half for a trouser, so it's five. So I created a show, the genesis of my show came from this quote where the title became the Khadi March just five meters. And the reason it's a call to action for urbanites to grant dignity to the rural brethren to rethink our engagement with the spinner weavers and people who work in the handicraft in the villages. I moved to, in 2018, I moved to my next show, which was Bound by Duty, Swaraj and Collectiveness. I, uh, the Gandhi's book, which I just mentioned, Hind Swaraj written in 1999, is known as the biggest critique for modernity. When I say modernity, uh, anything which is moving towards material, material, materialism, uh, the material success, nobody is thinking inwards. And again, here we are reaching back to what pandemic has taught us. So in 2018, I turned to Gandhi's Hind Swaraj. I, I was inspired by the idea of social responsibility and investigated relationship between myself, societies and the social transformation. Um, so uh, Ajra, I don't know why there are these uh, red pen marks, but I'll just run it through. Um, uh, uh, so uh, since you did your handloom project, I'm sure you're aware of Ajrak uh, process, uh, but uh, just to give you a little more understanding, Ajrak is a reverse block printing technique. And what is a reverse block printing technique? In a normal block printing, you take a block and you stamp it. So that's the color you take in and that gets stamped on the fabric. When you say reverse block printing technique, you take a block, put it in the resist, stamp it on the fabric, and then you dye it. So when you dye it, wherever you have put your resist, that's the pattern it's done. That is why it's called ajrak is a reverse block printing uh, and dyeing technique. So the printed ajraks, um, both sides are amongst the finest examples of, uh, in the world. The craft of Ajrak textile dates back to 4,500 year old. And uh, from technical perspective, it's a very laborious uh, technique. So uh, why, why Ajrak and uh, why did I take up Ajrak? As I mentioned, it was because I was doing indigo project and Ajrak means indigo. 
Um, and uh, I work with the 10th generation of Ajra craftsmen living in Bhuj. His name is Junaid uh, Muhammad Tatri. But my designs are entirely contemporary interpretation of the politics of indigo, salt, Khadi movement, and the meaning of Swaraj, uh, of India's freedom struggle in the 21st century. But the question is why Gandhi influenced my art practice? So I am a generation that came 10 years after Indian independence. This generation has grown up hearing stories of nationalist movements and the freedom struggles. And many of us are from the family who witnessed the violence during the partition that our parents and grandparents uh, experienced. My mother is one of them. She's from Kashmir. She experienced the aftermath as a 14 year old girl. Uh, girl. Um, so uh, then life came to a full circle when uh, we were in Gujarat and I uh, brushed uh, through incidents like 9-11, uh, the Gujarat riots, um, and uh, one felt the need of citizen awakening and participative communities with a strong sense for my country and my duty. That they, these were the uh, moments that I found resolve in my head. And this is why when I was reading Gandhi, his idea of Swadharma towards my country, Sarvode, upliftment of all, <clears throat> was the beginning of touching his philosophies relevant at that point of time. So I'll quote uh, Henry Beecher where he says, every artist dips his brush in his own soul and then creates what he's encountered in his life. Um, this is an installation, uh, site-specific installation where, uh, um, uh, which is the genesis of my show, the uh, Khadi March, just five meters, where I mention um, uh, Gandhi's quote, instead of giving three pesa to the spinner and weavers, give them three anas. This he addressed to the urban uh, viewers. Uh, the title of this um, uh, inst site-specific installation is Yarn Spring, is, uh, is made out of thousand bunches of hand-spun cotton yarn, braided, knotted, and macrame. I explored the idea of 30 crore urban population as a duty towards my country to buy five meters once a year. The mammoth production demand it'll create for spinner and weaver and handicraft maker could bring on another social movement effortlessly. The production and consumption also could connect the urban to the rural. This structure represents 70% of India's population that live in the villages who are spinner and weavers. The spring of yarns made out of yarns is indicative of the economic growth and their livelihood and the rest follows. So the question that I was raising to the viewer was, do we value craft? You did your handloom project and you, you, you went in deeper into inquiry to understand how the craftsmen were living, what were their livelihood. So that, that was hugely admirable for the school authorities to give you that project. And here I am talking about, do we value craft, artisanal skill, and the labor of our rural fellow men and countrywomen? If so, how do we demonstrate this to ourselves and to one another? As a visual artist, I was exploring the idea of taking an action of five meters and once a year, and that would be one reason how we could give them respect, how we could give them livelihood. So not only the idea of Swadharma of buying five meters was to possess, to reclothe urban India, but also to build new bonds between the urban and rural population. I use Khadi as a medium that can be a catalyst for a new dialogue with a fellow human beings in the uh, rural India. So all that I'm saying, well, the, the idea of five meters, perhaps um, um, I'll read a few lines out of the poetry that came along with this show um, to give you the depth of the emotion of an artist. Um, so just a few lines, though this poetry is 143 lines, but uh, just for you to get the, the broad sense of how was the genesis of the show. That little boy still plays in dirt. He needs clean water to drink. After 70 years of our nation on its feet, this is 70 because this was 2016, yet clothing and fooding and hygiene for 700 million of us still unanswered. The puddles and the potholes I remain unrepaired. Flooding and infrastructure haywired. 
substandard schools, dysfunctional healthcare. What took so long and why to educate the masses and civilize? I stood silently brooding. Let's walk with the flame of candle in our hands. Let's ignite this urban socialism. Like the human chain it spreads, you, me, and 300 million of us an effortless sacrifice and gain. Just five meters, my friends, and we can do it together. So I'm talking to the young minds today, need to think that how we need to connect with the rural population. And this is an individual action. It's an understanding of, uh, it, of the emotion. Uh, can, can we connect with the um, uh, rural population? Then came my three, uh, 2D artworks with the Ajrak. These are Ajrak artworks. Uh, 2D uh, lend uh, on the title Lender Hand. It's a composition of two Ajrak um, uh, left hands. Through this artwork, I'm also trying to engage urban communities in lives and livelihood of rural Indians and reintroduce the heritage textile tradition, Ajrak, through my works. Uh, this is the closer look uh, uh, for the artwork. And then came this installation of mine where I I, I created uh, where I was exploring the idea of production and consumption of khadi as a means of self purification. So when I say self purification, um, I, I, when I talk to high school kids and I ask them, when do you remember your country, your what do you do on the 15th August and 26th January? So they say, ma'am, it's a holiday. We wear our Indian clothes. We sing, happy, be merry. I said, but when it's your parents' birthday or your friend's birthday, you do something, don't you? And uh, then that's an idea. Then I tell them, well, why, how about buying five meters once a year for the country? Um, and, and that idea, when you do something for, for, the, for, for a cause like this, you feel good. It's like feeling good. It's a feel good factor. If you feel good about doing something good, and the other person in your class of 30 or 50 or 80 or 500. So then it's like, uh, then it's like, uh, uh, sorry, the, uh, my presentation went away. Is that right? Oh, no, ma'am, it's still visible to us. Uh, there was a call which came and I can't see my presentation. Um, um, it's still open to us, so I think you can just click on the window. Mm, what do I do? Sorry, the sharing. Oh. Pause, yeah. bring, uh, bring your shared window in the front. How would I do that? Um, so just click on the PowerPoint at the bottom in your taskbar. I just, just open PowerPoint and then I think you'll be fine. Yeah. Is that okay? Well, anyway. So if one does it, two does it, that feeling of the feel good factor is a feeling of self purification. And when number of people do it together, it's a moral regeneration of the society. Right. So, uh, so I was trying to explore the idea of production, consumption, and self purification through this installation that you see. Uh, and this is what was there on the. So the, these these were these are Ajrak bags and with the logo of just five meters. In fact, uh, they were um, uh, the, the Khadi Village Industry KVIC wanted to have these bags to be sold in their commercial outlets. So anybody who uh, buy something should go in this and it's like a reminder to you when you're carrying a bag like this and in the, during the same show uh, in the 21st century as an artist I was exploring the idea of clothing as a catalyst to the social movement and um, the reason I wanted to create because the Khadi uh, um, the hand spun hand woven had already taken such a hit in terms of the variability of the fabric uh, the design element of the fabric. And I wanted to create as a designer, perhaps I wanted to create such design so that the, the thinking may reverse. And also uh, touching upon Gandhi's idea of during freedom struggle, white khadi became a nationalist dress. It was Gandhi's idea to bring unification and true civic engagement of political consciousness and all. Wearing white is, a, is an idea of political believing in political consciousness in all. So hence, I, uh, the choice of Khadi clothing means a lifestyle change for all of us and a renewed change, renewed look altogether. It makes us aware, but when we are wearing it, we, it has, makes us aware of the livelihoods of the spinners and weavers uh, who are sustained through the handicraft work, clothing as a true civic engagement with the idea of my country. 
And these are some of the designs that were created where I was exploring the transformative possibilities of clothing. And uh, not only the dress, the, the jackets that were created as a spring summer collection of uh, 2016, I also created caps. Did you see the caps? The Gandhi cap converted into the Ajra caps. Uh, for Gandhi, uh, uh, historically in India, there was no headgear. And every time he attended a British uh, meeting, he would see the British wearing caps and Indian heads were, uh, were without any head cover. And he, he then asked uh, uh, the organizations like Khadi Bhandars and all to, to can, can somebody give me designs for that the Indians also start wearing. And that's when the idea of uh, Gandhi Topi came in. And Gandhi Topi design was also decided amongst um, with a lot of research. And finally, he zeroed it down to the Kashmiri uh, silhouette, Kashmiri pattern, but you have to twist it and wear it. Um, this is the background to the headgear of Khadi Topi, which I created with Ajrak. This is an installation view in the gallery. And these are the 2D works which I created as a design element through my works, but these are artworks on Khadi which you see. So um, if you see this particular element, there is a miniature style of a square within a square. Um, and um, I will uh, uh, take you down uh, the few artworks now where uh, the, the title of these artworks were timeless silhouettes. The, this blouse silhouette is a timeless pattern for the whole century. Over and above, we can experiment with them with the design sense and the colors. But um, uh, I, many people ask me, ma'am, is this a pleat? Did you stitch it, stitch a blouse and stitch on top of it? No, this, was, this is a masking uh, uh, concept of uh, printing. Uh, uh, the, uh, this is all on our drug. This is the basic pattern of a blouse. And then came uh, some angrakas. Uh, so the, uh, the idea of doing Angrakas was I wanted to document one, the Ajra textile tradition uh, and the blocks which are 300 to 400 years. Also the Angrakas style, what is documenting what women have been wearing in this whole century, the length and the, uh, and the little uh, uh, change a little bit, but the basic pattern of Angraka remains the same. Um, uh, so this is for you to have a look at some more styles and designs and artworks. And then came my, uh, the fish series, uh, uh, the Swaraj, where I, uh, I wrote about uh, um, Gandhi's um, biggest critique to modernity. And, um, and why fishes? Uh, because uh, I created fishes because uh, um, when millions and trillions of fish school together in water, they bring oceanic currents. And, and if they can bring oceanic currents, they can bring, we as humans, as individuals, could, when they group together, the idea of collective impact uh, could be brought in. And uh, hence, fish became my metaphor to, uh, to show my idea of Hind Swaraj in, uh, in this 2018 show. So I examine the idea of collectiveness and collective impact that can bring about a social change with evolved and spiritually aware communities. So collective fishes and collective impact become my motivation in narrating relevance to Gandhi's critique to modern civilization, noting his emphasis on an evolved ethical and spiritual selves for creating an alternative perspective to a better world. Uh, so uh, uh, the singular fish was an idea of individuals who have harnessed strength can move mountains. Um, and to bring social revolution on creating peaceful society, the idea of self-rule and self-control need to be uniquely experienced by each individual. It is, it is not a mandate by, by the authorities or the government or any. Individually, individually, one has to seep in that idea of my swadharma towards my country, towards my fellow being. And then one person uh, starts feeling and then the 10 and then the community. So that is the moral regeneration of the society uh, that one is looking for. And perhaps the pandemic came in as a big teacher to us. It is a little wonder therefore that Gandhi would find the sea as an important feature in his all his stories. 
So these are some artworks which I uh, rush you through. Uh, you can watch, you can see them on, on my website. But I would like to talk more of Gandhi's concepts, which. Um, uh, uh, for Gandhi, his ethical and spiritual self was embedded in the realm of political struggles for justice to fight the British for freedom. He treated the ethical and spiritual self as the foundational source of bringing about social and political emancipation. And these are textile mural, murals which I created in 2019. And uh, effectively in this uh, mural, I created about 2000 fishes and this is as long as 80 feet. Just to give you a scale of 80 feet is if you drop a, a piece of fabric from the 10th floor of any building is this one whole artwork, but split into four pieces. This is the scale of the artwork which I'm trying to uh, explain to you. But again, did you see the collectiveness of the fishes through the Ajrat medium? And there some of the media, some the, 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 the way to present it uh, is like the waves uh, in the gallery. And Salt the Great March, as I'd uh, spoken to you earlier, was about an idea of Swadharma and Sarvode. I created an installation of Khadi with Sanskrit calligraphy, giving a kinetic, kinetic look in the form of structured sail, depicting the walk of Gandhi and hundreds of volunteers before beginning the famous Dandi March. And I'm sure many of you would have seen uh, this image of Gandhi walking in a public domain when he started to walk from the Gandhi ashram, the whole uh, volunteers uh, were about, they say about, um, I don't, uh, I wouldn't give you the right figure. Uh, they were all wearing white. It looked like the humanity was wearing white that day. And to give that impact to the younger generation through my, um, uh, through my this installation, I created 50 sails and constructed them and, and hung them as, as if this is, uh, this is the walk which is happening. Uh, as an idea of surge. So uh, also uh, Gandhi in his, um, in his uh, Salt the Great March show, uh, he relies the millions in India around the world, uh, the indis indisputable power of collective nonviolent action. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, Salt the Great March was his first uh, uh, brush with an idea of collective collectivity and the collective impact. Um, this is a painting um, which was inspired by Nandala, both painting uh, of Gandhi walking, and I created it on Ajrak with Kantha work, if you see. And these are artworks uh, from the Salt the Great March, but I was talking about the solidarity, um, this idea of Swadharma, collectiveness, and the solidarity. Um, so the message of spinning wheel is much wider than its circumference, it's a quote by Gandhi. And, uh, and while I was researching on this work and creating my body of work, the words which kept hitting me and which are so relevant from today's point of view is self-reliance, spiritual growth, moral regeneration, service to humanity, fearlessness, self-purification, economic freedom, connecting rich with the poor, unifying, empowering all, sarvode. Can you imagine all, all these words uh, are relevant and these are words which you read out of Gandhi's text. So hence Gandhi becomes relevant in the 21st century of what he was trying to do for the, to fight the British, but also to bring communities together. There were many underlying ideas and work which Gandhi was doing uh, when he was fighting the British at the political level and at bringing the communities together because when he came back from South Africa, he saw the self-esteem of Indians gone very low. And the first thing which he came and which he had experienced in South Africa was an idea of spinning. And when he came to India, there was no, he couldn't find a charka as well. He figured it out where to get the charka. But the idea of spinning from home to home was unifying people at the bottom most uh, level. And uh, on the top, yet all of them got together and fought for the British. And that's when he told the women of our country, India cannot get freedom if you do not involve yourself. So women came in forefront, did their spinning, did their weaving, and yet fought along with him. So he was making uh, 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 an army for himself along with building a community. And... Um, and this is about my Indigo show, which I just mentioned uh, to you before I began about, I spoke uh, uh, about the Indigo farmers. 
and um, and how I explored Ajrak at that point of time. And um, let me read uh, just a few lines of that poetry so that I don't need to explain more about this indigo farmers. Uh, this will explain to you the whole sense of what indigo show was. The blues of indigo or the moods of indigo, toiling and sweating, plowing and cultivating, die of hunger, no food to eat but true indigo. I'm talking about the farmers. Why says a farmer's child, innocently I'm hungry, pleads father, let's go and plow the field and bring food for my dying mother. She's dying of hunger. Father, I'm hungry. So that was the situation um, where uh, 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 socio-political uh, landscape of the farmers that they were living in. The thing thunkers in force, the hell break loose, like worms they die, so they do even today. Mahatma steps in, stop growing indigo, we will fight. We need wheat and rice to survive. For the dying farmers who gave their lives to grow indigo plant, the blood that spilled in the fields of blue is the blood that stained the chest of indigos to reach England. Do we need another Mahatma to fight for the 21st century farmers? The blues of indigo or the moods of indigo. So this gives you a complete sense of Gandhi's fight uh, uh, in Champaran uh, against the British. And then came this installation of mine where I had these 300 discs made out of indigo dyed prints. And it was a homage paid to the farmers where I was trying as an artist trying to show the sculptures. Each sculpture was equivalent to the farmer and there were the sordid stories being told uh, at, the, at, the, at the back of it was my poetry which I just read to you. So this was a, a, a this is a installation which I created at that point of time. People in Delhi may have seen uh, these works, and I'm going to move ahead. This is uh, a part of my Indigo show. Some of the gallery installation views, and last, I'm going to end up with Gandhi as a timeless phenomenon. I created this installation with uh, with the twelve flags. Uh, was attempt to highlight Gandhian philosophy of Sarvodaya. Swaraj, Swadharma, and Swadeshi. Although without alluding to specific historicity of events, Gandhi's ideas seem eternal and embedded in time. And uh, just like the moon uh, waxes and wanes and come back to its shape, similarly, Gandhi's ideas keeps coming back after 100 years. Um, so I'm inspired by the crescent of the moon and that has an alluring beauty, legend, and a timeless quality. So this installation uh, is at Indira Gandhi National Center for Arts. And this is where I last, I end my uh, last, last artwork uh, on a title, Gaudhuli. Gaudhuli was a reference in the book Hind Swaraj. It is called Gaudhuli in Sanskrit and Hindi or in Gujarati means the dusk moment. So what is a dusk moment? It is a line of terminator, a line of change from, uh, from the day to the night or, or uh, reverse. So I'm trying to say this is a transient moment today for all of us when we are going through this pandemic. Uh, how the pandemic has halted our lifestyles and how technology has taken over our lives. It is an idea of being self-aware enough to eschew the temptations of the modern civilization that offers. Why I'm constantly saying modern civilization, you as children are so young, I mean, for you, modern civilization is a way of life. But when Gandhi spoke of modern civilization, he was talking about modern civilization from the point of view, how do we measure success, progress, and development with material terms? So because we are not, we, we started to work like slaves uh, from the corporate world or in the commercial world, there has to be some time to yourself to think. And, and, and for, for all the reasons, good or bad reasons, pandemic gave us naturally moments to think and, uh, and introspect. And hence I say pandemic has, has come as a big teacher to us. Uh, and I quote Gandhi and I conclude, in a gentle way, you can change the world. So thank you very much, kids. I hope I'm able to um, uh, draw some inferences of um, all the four philosophies that I've worked on during my last decade. Aditya, over to you. Yeah. Uh, Ma'am, thank you for presenting that. I must say, in particular, the Urchuk art actually looks quite stunning. 
um, I think the, the quote that you proffered on about how instead of giving our local artisans three pesa, we should give them three ana, and by just five meters are quite powerful messages that everyone here should try to take home. Mm-hmm. On that note, I'd like to ask you, how else do you think we can improve our relationship with India's local artisans? I think um, it is at the three levels. One is at the government level. They need to have their policies framed well uh, for the artisans. Second, I would say the state government should support their infrastructure, the artisans, because it's there in different uh, states where they are. in. And thirdly, coming back to the individual level. And where this is where I come in as far as my work is concerned, that every individual has to feel about uh, the artisans. And uh, no matter what you want, we can't direct other people to do anything. Government has to do their job. State infrastructures have to do the law. So it is government, state, and at the individual level. I feel that is the only way um, we we need to uh, go ahead by supporting. We, We are only responsible for our own actions. The understanding of how to support them has to come from within us. We have to do our bit. Right, ma'am. Um, before I ask my next few questions, anyone who has questions from the audience, you can send them to me in the Zoom chat. We already have two or three, so I'll proceed with those. Uh, ma'am, apart from designing your artwork, did you also conceptualize how to display it in the exhibitions to have maximum impact? Oh, yes, all the time. All the time. Uh, if you see the last... Uh, uh, exhibition on, in fact, all, all my shows, um, uh, there's a lot of thinking which goes behind um, uh, not only how to present them, like for example, in 2018, when I had a show Swarp, uh, Swaraj and Collectiveness, uh, it was previewed at IGNCA, Indira Gandhi National Center for Arts. Then I was invited by uh, India International Center now, if you've been to India International Center, the one of the main halls which they have, it has a beautiful dome at the top. And, and that inspired me to create, I had already created fishes on, on, on the artworks that you saw, but the murals came in because I wanted to create an aquarium of fishes. I wanted to give that impact of uh, a view like you or anybody who walks into the gallery space and he thinks he's entered the textile aquarium of fishes. So there's a lot of thought which goes into uh, setting it up. And of course, I have um, individually, I have my outreach programs where I invite the craftsmen. Uh, Junaid is always invited to give a workshop for anybody who's interested to do this one day, which is totally fixed. The second day is my Sarvode Chintan um, uh, uh, vertical from my own end, which I create and where I only invite the high school kids so that uh, uh, like you have these amazing questions. So similarly, as many kids who they come, they are free to ask me anything. And many do not believe in Gandhi's philosophies. Um, and I would say to use Gandhi's philosophy rather than isms like Gandhiism gets into very, uh, very critical domain. Uh, so believing in Gandhi's philosophy is walking on those philosophies. So, um, uh, so many of the children, many, many kids do not believe in, and, and they would give me a reason. And I leave it to them to decide to take it or not take it. But I did my bit in explaining um, his philosophies and uh, in relevance to today's day and age. Uh, Ma'am, I think in response to that answer, that's actually quite an appropriate audience question. Uh, What is the best way one can imbibe Gandhiji's teachings and principles in our daily lives? What is the best way, sorry, uh, how to? That one can imbibe Gandhiji's teachings and principles in our daily lives. That's very interesting. So I I must quote Gandhi here in his book, Hind Swaraj, in his book, Preface, uh, in the, in the first print of preface, after that is many printing prints have taken place of Hind Swaraj. You don't find that quote, but in the initial uh, prints, uh, he mentions in the preface, this book is written by me and not by me. It's written by me because I'm writing, not by me because none of the philosophies belong to me. And if you realize, all of you can realize that these are philosophies which are a part of uh, good human beings. It's a humanitarian thoughts, whether it's Jainism or Buddhism, to be good. There's an eightfold path. They're all to be good to each other, to support each other. Those eight which eightfold path, which you all learn as a part of your history, 
is what Gandhi was talking about. He says, I learned all of this from my mother to be good human beings. So you just have to be a good human being. Uh, you don't have to imbibe him. You have to imbibe those good values to be a good, a good person, to help other, to support other, and, um, and uh, move on. Being a, a nice person is, who feels for others. Right. Uh, Ma'am, from an artistic perspective, how come you chose art and textiles as your medium for expression to celebrate and uh, to inculcate Gandhian ideas? And what are some other mediums you hope to explore in the future? So uh, my trajectory has been uh, really interesting. I'm a postgrad in English literature. That's where I begin with. And uh, then I moved on uh, to train myself as a designer from NIFT. And I had my label for almost about 10 years. And I moved towards visual art medium. And for initial 10 years, I was doing my canvases like a painter would do. A canvases uh, with acrylics, with, uh, uh, with um, dry pastels and all the different mediums which are available to convey what I was saying at that point of time. I met Gandhi, let's say that, in, in my... Uh, in, in the Indigo show, which was in collaboration with an American artist. And I was talking about the, the role of Indigo in India's freedom struggle. And I started to read Gandhi at, on a very serious note. Uh, and, and that's where my journey began with Gandhi. And um, so since I was uh, talking about Gandhi through and his philosophies, it became important for me uh, to uh, take a brush with Ajra because Indigo and then I, I felt this is, a, a, I felt responsible perhaps as a designer, uh, uh, you know, functional fabrics, uh, all of you may be wearing ajrak, buying from Fab India or ajrak uh, upholsteries and uh, anything which is to do with functional. But I realized that creating artwork is a documentation of the textile tradition, which has, uh, which began 4,500 years old. I should be responsible to create artworks that can take it uh, to further to 100 more years. Artworks will stay in the museum, but the, the kurtas or the saris will not last for longer time. So that's where the whole trajectory went, uh, went on uh, with, the, uh, with, the, um, with Ashraf and me as, uh, as a visual artist. Um, right, but right. I use different to, to convey what I'm saying. To convey what I'm saying, it could be installations, it could be poetry. But I have to convey what I'm saying. I'm conveying all what I just explained to you. It could be through many different uh, um, mediums. Uh, right, ma'am. If there's one quality that you wish to instill in the students of our school, just one takeaway adjective, perhaps, what would it be? That's a difficult question. Because you children are so fortunate studying in Siram. Uh, uh, your founders, your mentors, your leaders in your school, and you leaders in your, the students' leaders are, um, I, I think you're doing a fantastic job in terms of, uh, um, in, in terms of uh, giving the best uh, to the children and uh, leading the, the, the right way, giving the right path. And that's all is important. Of course, uh, one should have uh, uh, the short term and the long term goals uh, as far as you students are concerned. And um, uh, one should shirk from the failures because I strongly feel fail failures um, when you meet any kind of uh, incident, you feel you're not reached where you had to. They're the stepping stones of success. And, um, uh, and that's it, I move on in life. Right. Um, thank you, ma'am. One final question. I think our students were very engrossed in the exhibitions you gave us. So one question is, how long did it take, does it take um, on average for you to put together an exhibition? That's an interesting question. To, I, when I gauge back uh, and I see my own graph of coming up with the show, it takes me about two years to create one body of work. Um, uh, after Indigo show, Salt the Great March show came in 2013. And then the next show came in 2016. And then the next show came in 2018. So between two, two and a half years, uh, it goes my research work. And um, I, uh, when I really introspect, why is that also? Uh, I've been a literature student. So most of my time goes only in reading, reading 
and uh, and writing and drawing in my notebook. So there's a no lot of notebook drawings which are constantly happening. And, and the final outcome of the outburst uh, is, uh, is almost at the end of my, uh, when I know, yeah, I'm ready to create my works. Two and a half years, if I may put it correctly. Right, um, well, thank you, ma'am. I think those are all our questions for today. Um, that was extremely insightful and dare I say, made me feel at peace. Um, I think we all learned what values are important and I'm sure a lot of the student body will be more conscious about supporting our local artisans. Yes. Um, I'd like to end here by quoting Mahatma Gandhi, a small body of determined spirits fired by an unquenchable faith in their mission can alter the course of history. So I hope that everyone here does pick up a valuable lesson. A uh, special thank you once again, ma'am. Um, and thank you all for watching. We hope you enjoyed. Thank you. Thank you, all of you. It's been a pleasure uh, speaking to all of you. And I wish you all the best. Stay safe and um, enjoy yourself. To conclude this assembly, we'd love to showcase a song that was Mahatma Gandhi's favorite bhajan, Vaishnav Janto. It was music echoed by many of India's freedom fighters and is a large part of why we can live peacefully in India today. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed this assembly. A special thank you once again to Miss Jyoti, Annie Ma'am, and all the students who contributed submissions for Peace Day. Keep these beautiful messages in your mind and heart and try to be a proponent of peace today because that's the simplest solution to get past any obstacle.